Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV in what I call English and I'm your host Mr. Z. This is not a really a review, it's just a short review. We just have two hours with a new Audi Q7 e-tron, the plug-in hybrid version. So the Audi Q7 e-tron has a plug-in hybrid powertrain, which means on one hand we have the 3 liter V6 TDI engine, so a diesel engine with 258 horses and it's good for maximum torque of 600 newton meters. Then in between the um, the TDI and the transmission we have the electric engine. This is good for 128 horses and it has a maximum torque of 350 newton meters. Together, so the system power, we say it has 373 horses and a maximum torque of 700 newton meters. I'm sorry, we don't have all the basic facts yet, so I'll just give you a glimpse of them. And I apologize, due to the lack of time, I don't have the, um, all the, the numbers in miles. However, um, you can drive up to 56 kilometers full electrically, and the top speed full electrically is reached at 125 kilometers per hour, while with a TDI engine, the car runs up to 225 kilometers per hour. And uh, you accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in 6 seconds. The Audi Q7 e-tron comes with a battery capacity of 17.3 kilowatt hours and the battery is placed over the uh, rear axis so you lose about 200 liters of the trunk and the Q7 e-tron is only available as a 5-seater not as a 7-seater like the other one as well. Um, Audi is very proud that they have a charging technology that uses up to 7.2 uh, kilowatts and uh, with 400 volts you can charge the whole battery, battery in between two and a half hour. Well, if you just use your normal uh, power at outlet at home, it takes up to eight hours. Well, at least in Germany, the Audi Q7 starts with a price of 80,500 euros, but it's pretty much loaded for this price. You get, for instance, the virtual cockpit, the MMI Plus, um, the predictive uh, F efficient assist and uh, LED headlights and much more, but I couldn't memorize all of it. The Audi Q7 e-tron comes with a curb weight of 2,445 kilograms, of which 375 kilograms are uh, responsible for the plug-in hybrid technology, including the battery. But enough from the car. You know we have a full review of the new Audi Q7 in our stream. It's linked in the description of this video. And and uh, I just want to drive it now. Well, since we don't have time, I will uh, now make a clip, a little clip, uh, a mix between uh, just driving and me talking. From the start on, you drive full electrically unless you uh, reach a certain uh, speed or you really press the uh, throttle hard, then the TDI kicks in. Uh, but you can really, I told you already, drive up to 125 kilometers per hour full electrically. The streets here around Madrid in Spain are pretty crowded, uh, so I can't really uh, go 125 kilometers. By the way, the speed limit is 120 anyway. I just tried it out, I drove uh, 100 kilometers per hour full electrically, and I'm pretty impressed how seamless um, the switch between driving full electrically and uh, going uh, with a TDI engine works. You really, you hardly notice this. Plus Audi spent a lot of uh, time making the Q7 very silent and you hardly hear the TDI engine. Well, it's a little bit, just a glimpse of engine. That's what I noticed in comparison to driving full electrically. You have different uh, plug-in hybrid driving modes, uh, there's a special switch here and we can switch between EV, so f driving full electrically, hybrid, the best of two worlds, and um, hold, battery hold, so you hold the capacity of your battery and battery charge, that's when you want the TDI engine to charge the battery while you drive. In the display here you see a little um, Q7 drawing 
where it shows you where the energy is going. Right now the TDI is working, so it is losing power. Now we're going full electrically and now we are sailing or coasting. I think that's the word, coasting. And if I would, uh, you know, slow down the car now, use the brake, then we would gain some energy so it would be recuperating. I'm pretty happy that we have the head-up display here because um, I think the virtual cockpit is now way too crowded. Um, we don't have a RPM meter anymore. It's like a whatever, a power meter, 25, 50, 75, 100% and boost, while on the other end you see when you charge. Um, and it gives you a view of your reach, the electric reach as well as the TDI reach. By factory setting, the uh, Q7, the Q7 e-tron comes with a, a predictive efficient uh, assist. This system is working with the map data of the navigation system as well as the, with the camera for scanning the current speed limits. And if you choose your route, if you say, well, I want to drive here and there, it uh, looks, is it going up and down and tries to calculate the optimal way to uh, use the power of your battery to uh, use as, l uh, as little diesel fuel as possible and that's the way how trucks drive in Spain they just use two roads and so uh, the assist system is working for you and helping you for instance if you um, can slow down it gives you a little icon so you put your foot f from the throttle but actually it's working all by itself. So we have the adaptive cruise control working with a, a lane keeping assist together with the uh, navigation system and the camera for the uh, speed limits. And um, yeah, it's, well, Tesla would say the autopilot version two even. So we've been on the Spanish highway for quite a while. I didn't do anything because I activated the lane keeping assist and the adaptive cruise control. So, you know, it's not much for me to do. Um, however, now we're leaving the highway and we will be on the country roads for a while. And before we leave the uh, highway, I will go from the battery hold mode to the hybrid mode. We are now on the country road. I have two, uh, both systems activated. So this means the uh, um, predictive efficient agent or assist system is working for me. And actually I can really enjoy the beautiful landscape here because I don't have to do anything. Um, if there's a, a curve that is too sharp for my current uh, speed, the car slows down automatically and I don't even have to press a brake for it. As you can see here, I'm, I have my foot not on the brake, not on the throttle. It's all the system that is working here for me now. And that's pretty neat. Especially, I, I'm, I'm totally lost. I don't know where I am right now. Um, so, I can really focus on what's going on here. I don't have to care about the speed limits because the system is recognizing them by themselves, especially here in Spain. I, I've never, never had any idea how they switch it. I only see it in the head-up display. Sometimes it's 50, then it's 90, then it's 70, and it's not even uh, like speed limits somewhere placed. It's just, I don't know how they do it. You have to be probably uh, from Spain to understand what's going on. However, that's really neat driving. Not, not in a, you know, fun, sporty way, but uh, very relaxing in terms of, um, well, you know, I just want to travel a long distance. Okay, it's not recognizing the road, uh, the, the lanes here inside the town and the speed limit is 30 kilometers per hour, so I have to steer myself, I'm shocked.
Bitte in 250 Metern links halten. Bitte in 100 Metern links halten. Jetzt links abbiegen. All right, we are back from our little drive. We drove 95 kilometers with an average speed of 60 kilometers per hour. And our fuel consumption concerning the diesel, we uh, had an average fuel consumption of 4.5 liter diesels on this trip. And we used 13.7 um, kilowatt hours of energy. And uh, we have a, a reach, an electric reach now uh, while the car is parked of just two kilometers and I was just asking the Audi guy hey, wait a minute we had a full battery we started with 17.3 kilowatt hours and we wasted 13.7 uh, so uh, what's with the rest and he said well you remember you never charge the battery all the way so you have to keep in mind whenever you hear about electric mobility uh, you never use or you hardly never use um, the full capacity of the battery just 80% and if you calculate 80% of 17.3 uh, that's around about 14 kilowatt hours so that suits us well I would like to take you inside because they have a pretty neat um, pretty neat inst uh, installation there and I would show you some stuff about it. Well Audi is providing us here a stripped down model of the Q7 e-tron and I think it's pretty interesting. Here for instance you see the battery unit and if you imagine the whole car this is where the trunk is. So this part of the trunk with a regular uh, Q7 you can lift the bottom of the trunk and have another compartment down there. Here sits the battery and you lose a little bit of width of the trunk because this is a charging unit and it takes a little bit of space in the trunk. Well as you might recognize here is a TDI engine and this is a transmission unit and in between we have the electric engine which means that uh, once you drive full electrically you have all the advantages of driving with all-wheel drive so the Quattro um, all-wheel drive by Audi. That's it. Uh, I'm about to close this down here. Uh, just a few things before I finally say goodbye. Uh, I really enjoyed driving with the Audi Q7 e-tron. The electric part is pretty neat uh, and I think it's a better Q7 overall in, instead of just the regular uh, petrol or diesel engine versions because here you can really drive silently you can you know stop polluting uh, the downtown area of your city or your neighborhood which is pretty neat and it's a silent driver anyway. Um, the predictive efficiency, efficiency assist system is really neat. I like it, especially driving in foreign areas. Um, however, you got to know it is uh, a rather defensive driving, you know, so the car recognizes uh, you're driving 90 kilometers per hour on a country road. The system knows well 900 meter ahead there's a 60 kilometer uh, per hour speed limit so the car reduces the speed just you know coasting or recuperating to the uh, speed limit sign normally you would drive 90 kilometers until the speed limit and then slow down you know in order to keep your driving license and if you have traffic behind you you're a little bit ashamed like yeah i'm sorry the car's driving you know however it is neat and you feel how the car can drive more efficiently than you do but even if you drive without the assist system the car's giving you hints like you know put your foot from the throttle and so on 
Um, another thing is the uh, active uh, throttle. So once you are driving f electrically, you really feel a resistance in the tr throttle and you have to push it really hard to make the diesel engine start working. It's a pretty neat system. Um, well, that's it, I guess, from my side. I know it's been a very short review. However, I hope you got enough information about the car that are useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them below in the comments. And um, today I just stop and say, this was Ausfahrt in English. I'm your host, Mr. Z. Goodbye. <laughs>